as we mentioned, the offensive player of the week in the conference this week is Justin McMillan, the Tulane quarterback, uh, threw for 199 yards and two touchdowns on 14 of 18 passing, rushed for 51 yards, had a touchdown in, uh, to lead a Green Wave offense that spun off 545 yards and scored touchdowns on six of McMillan's nine series in the 42-12 to win against FIU. Uh, McMillan improved to 6-1 and one as Tulane starter. Defensive player of the week is Memphis defensive end Bryce Huff. Five tackles, two tackles for loss, uh, had a sack that produced a key safety in Memphis's win against Ole Miss, um, led a Tiger defense that limited Ole Miss to 173 total yards. Uh, his safety came with 627 left in the fourth quarter. Uh, that gave Memphis a 15-10 lead, also gave them the ball back, and they promptly ran out the clock to get the win. And the special teams player of the week is SMU wide receiver C.J. Sanders, uh, delivered what might have been the biggest play of uh, the Mustangs, 37-30 win against Arkansas State. His 98-yard kickoff return came after uh, Arkansas State had t- taken the 23-16 lead in the third quarter, um, put SMU right back uh, level with the uh, the Red Wolves, but for the extra point. We'll go through our five-man honor roll. It's time for this through the call. Uh, but we do have Coach Sonny Dykes from SMU on the line. Uh, as we said, SMU was a 37-30 to winner against Arkansas State uh, last Saturday. Uh, Mustangs play their home opener this Saturday against North Texas at Gerald J. Ford Stadium in Dallas. 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central Time start on ESPN3. And as we mentioned, C.J. Sanders is the Special Teams Player of the Week in the conference. Uh, Coach, thanks so much for joining us on the call today. Uh, if you would, just give us uh, your, your thoughts on the win against Arkansas State, maybe a word or two about C.J. Sanders and what he's brought to you and your plans, uh, your, what you expect to see when you uh, open at home uh, Saturday against North Texas. Uh, could you repeat that one more time? I'm sorry. I, I just kind of got on the call late. Sure, no problem. We just just recapping. If you just give us your, your thoughts on the win against Arkansas State, uh, as we mentioned, uh, C.J. Sanders is the special teams player of the week in the conference. Maybe your thoughts on his performance and what he's brought to you, and uh, your and your thoughts on the upcoming game against uh, North Texas, please. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, it was a good it was a good uh, road win for us. You know, I think we went and looked at the you know the week in college football and and just on the airplane after the game, I was just going through the scores looking and. You know, it's kind of through my own crude calculations, I kind of thought, uh, looked through, and I, to me, it looked like the road teams were like 50 and nine, or the home teams were like 50 and nine this weekend, uh, in college, throughout college football. Um, I think there were three road underdogs in all of college football that won, and we were one of them. Um, so, I mean, I, it's, it's really hard to win on the road, especially early in the season. Uh, it's just, it's just, really difficult you know uh there's just a lot of a lot of things that you have to do that's not the easiest travel uh place in the world you know we had to to bus and and do some things and i thought our guys handled it well we had about a two and a half hour delay on friday uh departing because of some weather issues in dallas and so you know you added it all up and and i thought our, our players did a really good job of staying focused and not letting any of that bother them uh we got off to a bad start in the game, you know, uh, Shane had really done a great job all at fall camp and taking care of the ball. And, and, you know, what, right out of the, right out of the shoot, we, we get a ball tipped and it gets intercepted and almost run back for a touchdown. They score on the first offensive play of the game. And, you know, I don't think it rattled our players at all. You know, I think we just stayed focused and kept playing. And that was a good thing to see. I think in certainly last year, uh, that would have had a big impact on us. And, and, uh, you know, I think we're much more, uh, emotionally stable and, and maybe a little tougher mentally than we have been in the past. And so I thought our guys handled it well. And, you know, we, we, we played pretty well in the, in the game. You know, we did a really poor job in the red zone of scoring touchdowns. Uh, we had a couple of special cues our special teams uh, miscues that were that, you know, we've got to get straight that really hurt us. Um, but I thought our defense played excellent in the first half. I think we gave up less than a hundred yards against a good offensive team and, and uh, responded well, made enough plays to, to, to win the game. As you mentioned, you know, CJ had a big kickoff return for a touchdown that I think was really a, a crucial play in the game. You know, they had just taken a lead, and we got a little bit of momentum back after that kick return, and so that was obviously a big play. Um, you know, North Texas this week will be really challenging. If you go back and look at the tape last year, I mean, they, they destroyed us. Um, you know, they were better prepared than we were. Um, you know, they – coached them better than we did. You know, they had their team ready to go, and we certainly didn't have ours ready. They played harder than we did. They played more physical than we did. Um, you know, it was just a really uh, uh, bad effort, but you got to give them all the credit in the world 
for the way they played against us last year. You know, I think their quarterback is, is Mason Fines, one of the uh, best quarterbacks in college football. I think you just look at his numbers, you look at the success he's had, um, you know, for a long time. You know, he's just going into his fourth year as a starter. You know, there's not many college quarterbacks that can say that. Um, you know, he's the he's the engine that makes the, makes the whole thing go. Um, you know, he's a really good football player, and and what even makes him better is the fact that he's such a good tough kid and just sets the tone for their entire program so we'll have our hands full Saturday and certainly uh, you know need to play better than we did last year Quick questions for coach Tony Dykes please star one on your telephone keypad will put you in the queue we will now take our first question from Sam Blum of the Dallas Morning News please go ahead your line is open Sonny I was hoping you could talk a little bit about uh Kylan and, and just kind of the way he played, uh, you know, obviously it was his debut and, and just kind of what you had expected from him and, and, and how you thought he executed. Yeah, I thought, I thought he played pretty well. I thought he got a little worn down at times, but, um, you know, he dropped a touchdown pass, which is a little bit uncharacteristic for him. But I, I thought he, uh, you know, I thought he played really hard, uh, you know, in a little bit different role. You know, he's kind of, you know, he's, he's gotten so much bigger in the last, uh, in the last two years. Um, you know, and playing a little bit more of a, of a fullback tight end position with his hand on the ground a little bit more than he has in the past. And and it was new for him, but I thought he handled it pretty well. I thought he did some good things. And, you know, he's somebody that I think can play a lot better than he did. You know, we have really high expectations for him and, and his role as it develops in our offense. And so I thought it was a, it was a good start, but I, I'm expecting a lot more as we move forward. And I was hoping just you know I know that um, Reggie said after the game that you guys went to see um, Kiki and everything. What I think I heard Kiki you know got on the plane with you guys. Just how is he doing and what was kind of the process like after the game to check on him? Yeah, you know, so, so anytime you have something like that happen where you, you know, you have a pretty tough uh, hit to, to your you know your head, um, you know, the first thing you do is they just want to make sure everything's good. And he had a little bit of numbness, and so but he was moving his arms and legs fine. So they're very precautious about those things. And they got him in and got him, um, you know, an MRI, uh, whatever, whatever it was. And, and everything came back. Uh, everything came back fine. Uh, he came back on the team playing with us, you know, had a headache, but otherwise is doing fine. Um, you know, it just needs to get some rest now and, and try to catch up on his sleep. And, and, you know, we'll see, what the doctors tell us, but I saw him uh, last night and, and uh, was certainly feeling better. Wasn't feeling completely well, but was feeling a lot better than he was on Saturday. So expect him to progress quickly and and uh, get back in it pretty soon. Well, that was Trevor too. Did you guys have an update on him? Yeah, I would expect he would play this week. Great, thank you. Thanks. We'll now take our next question. From Brett Vito of the Denton Record Chronicle. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Hey, Coach. How are you? Well, thanks. What, <clears throat> you uh, coached in the North Texas SMU rivalry for the first time last year. What is your impression of the rivalry after having a chance to coach in it? Well, I mean, there wasn't much rivalry last year. I mean, it was a complete beatdown. Um, so, you know, that's pretty, it's pretty one-sided, certainly the way I see it. Yeah, and it was, of course, your quarterback's debut there. How, how do you think he performed in his first time out with you guys? Um, you know, I thought he played pretty well. You know, I, I think you could tell he had played a lot of college football and, and certainly wasn't, um, you know, was very calm, level-headed, you know, made pretty good decisions with the football. And, you know, a lot of things we got to get cleaned up. But I thought, you know, for the first time out with a lot of, new faces and a new offense and everything. I thought he performed pretty well. You know, I would expect him to get better and better. You know, the more snaps he gets in our offense, I mean, those were the first, you know, true game snaps that he'd ever had, you know, running a different system with, with those players. Um, and so I would expect him to, you know, to improve, you know, as we move forward and, and play better this week than he did last week. He's certainly going to need to. And could you, could you talk a little bit about, uh, what you saw from North Texas in their in their first game, it seemed like they played particularly well offensively early in that game. Were you impressed by the way they were just able to get things going? 
Yeah, a lot of big plays. You know what I'm saying? Just a lot of a lot of big plays, a lot of speed, executed their stuff really well and and uh, kind of overwhelmed uh Abilene Christian and um you know looked really sharp. All right, thanks, coach. Okay, thank you. We now take our next question from Bill Embody of twenty four seven sports. Please go ahead, your line is Hey, Sonny, uh, just wanted to uh, ask you, what kind of went into the process of, of having Shane be the starter? So when did you guys start preparing with him as as a starter? And, and just also, how did uh, Will Brown was respond and, and Terrence Gibson respond you know, when, when they learned the news? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. The kind of the way we do that stuff is, is you know, uh, Rich, the quarterback position is really no different than any other position as, as far as the way we view it. I mean, what happens is you start camp and, and everybody kind of gets the same amount of reps and then guys start to distinguish themselves from other guys. And as they do that, they start to get a little bit more reps. And, and then you look at the you know success and failures that they have. And then, you know, you try to make adjustments off of that. And so if you're just kind of fine tuning the thing all the way down. And so, you know, we didn't buy cupcakes and have a little party. And when we announced the starting quarterback, but um, you know, we just kind of, Shane just kind of started getting more reps and started going with the ones a little bit more. And, you know, I think the other guys handled it great. I mean, look, I, you know, Will uh, and Terrence both are really unselfish guys. And, and um, you know, I think they get it. I mean, we're going to play whoever's the best. We don't care who it is. Um, and so they understand that. And, and, you know, they're both working really hard to, to become the best. And uh, I would expect nothing less from those guys. You know, I think they're um, – you know, I think they're both, you know, really competitive. I think they both uh, have improved dramatically. Um, you know, the the transformation Will's made in a year from this time last year to where he is now. You know, he's a completely different guy. Um, and, and, you know, Terrence's improvement from the spring to the summer to right now. You know, he got a lot of snaps last night, last night's practice. I mean, we had a really good practice, and both quarterbacks looked good last night. Those guys got a ton of reps, and and uh, you can see the the progress they've made. They understand how important it is every single day when they get reps to, to go out and perform at a high level and keep improving. And so, you know, I thought that, uh, you know, I, I'm excited about both of them and their future and, uh, you know, the future of the position for us. And then uh, the, the first half versus the second half defensively, just was it, did you guys see adjustments from Arkansas State? Was it something that you guys did yeah. well in the first half and maybe kind of fell off a little bit? Yeah, I think I think what happened, we just got on our heels a little bit. They hit a couple of plays on us and tempoed us and got a little bit of momentum, and we just couldn't quite get them stopped uh, coming out of the gate. And, and, you know, to me, it just they really weren't doing anything different. They just executed a little bit better. You know, I think they um, – we, you know, we didn't play a couple of routes particularly well. We've got to do a good job, a better job of, of you know, playing some route con- concepts better than we did. And, you know, I thought their receivers were really good and made a couple of competitive plays on the ball. The quarterback did a good chance of giving them uh, opportunities to make plays. And, you know, there were one or two plays that they made where we had really good coverage, where their receiver just went up and made an excellent play on the ball. And, and sometimes that happens. you got to nod, your, nod your, your cap to those guys and, and, you know, just move on to the next play. And so, you know, there were a couple of those. And, like I said, I thought the quarterback got settled in uh, a little bit more in the second half maybe than he did in the first. But, wasn't a whole lot of different scheme. We just didn't, you know, they just made some competitive plays on some balls in the second half. They didn't make in the first. And then just quickly, did you see that the, the hit on Kiki? Did you guys ask the refs about potential targeting or it kind of looked like he was engaged? Yeah, and then you're, yeah, they, yeah, we did. We did. They said it was a clean block. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Let me take one final question for Coach Sonny Dykes, please. Our next question comes from Chris Hummer of 24-7 Sports. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Hey, Coach. Um, I know you're just one game in. This is more of a big question, picture question. But uh, you had a lot of transfers who made a big impact in week one. I'm just wondering maybe with a bit of time to look and reflect on how they performed, um, how did the transfer portal kind of shape your roster earlier in the season? Well, I mean, it's definitely been, been good for us. Uh, I think that um, – you know, clearly, you know, our starting quarterback, I thought, performed pretty well and got off to a good start and, again, has a lot of experience. 
Um, you know, I think that, that as we move forward, those transfers will have an even bigger impact. You know, a lot of, a lot of those guys, you know, that either, you know, that transferred last year had to sit out a year. And so, you know, this is their first game experience in a long time. Um, and, you know, there's always some rust associated with that. Um, and, you know, the more that they play, the, the better they're going to play. So, you know, I would think that, you know, we certainly had an impact from, from several guys, but I think as the season moves along, I think the impact will, will be, you know, even more significant. Um, you know, it's been a great thing for us from a depth uh, and competition standpoint. It's made everybody in our program better. It's, it's given us a little bit of depth and an ability to, to play more players than we have in the past and keep us fresher and, you know, set us up for some of the fourth quarter battles that we're going to have to have, you know, with, with some of our opponents moving forward. And so, you know, I think it's uh, it's, it's been a good thing for us. I think it's going to continue to be a good thing for us, and and we'll play an even, even bigger impact as the season rolls along. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Coach, thank you for your time today. We'll look forward to hearing from you once again next Monday. Okay, thank you, guys.